Good morning, everyone. I uh, thought today I'll do something a little bit different. I'm out at a Cinnabine Park at the English Garden photographing hummingbirds. So what I'll do is I'll take you from the field, I'll show you what I'm doing out here, and then we'll take an image when I get back home, and I'll show you how I edit uh, the image. But uh, right now the English Garden at Cinnabine Park in Winnipeg is, is uh, quite popular with the hummingbirds as they're getting ready to start their migration. So I'll flip the camera around and I'll show you what my settings are and um, how I go about capturing the hummingbirds. So here's my settings that I have on my Sony a7 III right now with the 200 to 600 lens and the 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, I'm on a tripod. Uh, this is a, a Jobu Algonquin tripod with their uh, ball head. So this is my setup that I'm using today. Um, because I am on a tripod and I am using faster shutter speeds, I have the steady shot turned off. I just find it does get sharper pictures with the steady shot off at the high shutter speeds and on a tripod. So you can see this garden right here that they have planted. There's lots of bee balm and sylvia and lots of other flowers for the hummingbirds to feed on. Um, there is also nice trees that they rest on, so it gives them some nice opportunities for portraits and also in-flight shots when they're feeding. Oh, there's one feeding right now. So you can see them just in the middle of the screen there flitting around. So a little, a little bit more about the settings. I am in uh, aperture priority, it gives me the fastest shutter speed. And I also have um, the ISO set to auto with uh, uh, a minimum shutter speed set. So it just allows me to, to not worry about the settings. I do use the exposure compensation wheel right now. It's at zero, but I will bump that down if, if the highlights are getting a little bit... Uh, a little bit blown out so I'm just gonna see if I can there's a hummingbird just in front of me I'm gonna see if I can find them in the in the viewfinder here to show you guys oh he just flew away hey he's back there's one right there oh and he's gone or she, I should say, that was a, a female. Okay, so that's that's how I'm getting these photos right now. And um, we'll review, let's see what I've got on the, on the screen so far for today's shots. I don't know how well you can see that with the glare, but there's one I just took this morning. So we got uh, Quite a few shots already this morning. They've been very cooperative and feeding well. So, so that's it for out in the field here today. So what we'll do now is after I get some shots, we'll go back to the house and I'll show you how I edit some of the hummingbird shots I took today. I'll see you in a bit. Hello everyone. So the other day I was at the English Garden taking pictures of the hummingbirds and I said I would walk you through how I edit one. So this is the image we're going to edit today. This is a female ruby throat of a hummingbird who just landed on this branch uh, to partake of the bee balm over here on the left side. So first thing I do is uh, I'm going to go in and just apply a little bit of a crop. Um, actually when I look at the crop I think that looks okay. So I'm going to uh, maybe just bring that up just a little bit to get that eye on the, the line there. I'm going to make sure I don't clip the wing there. Uh, I think that looks pretty good right about there. So we'll do that. And as you can see this was shot at ISO 3200. So there is some noise in there. So next step is I'm going to run it through Topaz Noise AI. So we'll edit in Topaz Noise Denoise AI. I always find it best to um, do as they suggest and run the, run the Topaz 
noise, denoise AI uh, at the beginning of your edit. So I'd like to do it just usually just after I crop. I don't know, we'll see what that looks like. I always just do the auto. It does has sometimes have um, likes to over sharpen it a little bit. This image is pretty sharp already. Um, now to focus on it, so I'm gonna bump that down a little bit. Hit update and uh, see what that looks like. So this should just take uh, a couple seconds to get the preview done. Almost there. And there we go. There's the before on the left and the after on the right. So you can see how that that cleans up the noise really well. I just want to make sure that the the sharpening looks okay, that it hasn't over sharpened it. Uh, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to apply that to the image. So this will again just take a, a few seconds and then it will open back up in Lightroom in a new file. If you haven't tried Topaz Denoise AI, there is a free uh, trial period that you can get. Uh, I, I think it does a wonderful job of removing the noise uh, without softening the image too much. So I'll go back to Lightroom and there it is. That's the image from Topaz Noise, Denoise AI. So looking at the image, um, I always kind of like to work from the, the top on down. So I think it just can use a little bit of warming. Um, let's see what else we can do here. I think I'm going to just drop the highlights just a little bit to get a little bit more detail in there. Increase or decrease the blacks, just make it a little bit more contrasty. Um, exposure, I think it looks... What I'm going to do here uh, is I'm going to expose for the bird. I'm not going to worry about the background right now. I'm just going to watch my histogram up here so that I'm not, not clipping anything. But I'm going to increase that a little bit, bring down the highlights a little bit more, and make the bird pop. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a radial filter. And just rotate that. You can click down over here and it shows you what's been masked and you can expand that to get the majority of the bird. There we go. I'm not really worried about the very bottom of the bird, but I will make that a little bit bigger. Bring it back down, these wing tips. Okay, and then when you go in, what I'm gonna do uh, is you can just it's like making a vignette uh, on the image, but you can control where it's located. So you see if I bump down the exposure, it darkens um, out where the mask was applied, but the bird is still nice and bright. Now, I wouldn't want to do it that, that much. What I normally do is I bring down the shadows just to darken up a little bit, and maybe knock the exposure down just a little bit, leaving it a little brighter on the bird. So it just helps the bird pop and helps draw your eye to the lightest part of the image, which should be on the bird there. So it doesn't take much uh, to make a to make a, the bird pop. Like I said, you got to be careful you don't go too much and lose some of the detail in in your other other areas. So something like that looks good. Okay, so we're good with that. I uh, we'll probably want to just go in here and just bump the eye up just a little bit. So I'm just going to increase the exposure there a little bit and just make a nice little small one just for the eye. Just bring that up just a little bit more. And you can see it just lightens that eye up a little bit. Okay. Um, it was an overcast day a little bit on this day, so when that happens, I find uh, the the magentas and the reds get really quite saturated. So we'll go down into the HSL, 
panels and just grab the the magenta slider and just desaturate that a little bit you can also go in if you wanted to the luminance and you can make it a little bit brighter darker you can and you see how it's just adjusting that color i find this very handy in days when it really oversaturates some of the colors so i think i'm just gonna up the luminance a little bit on that now again because it was in doing that because it was darkened with the the radial filter that I applied so just make it a little bit lighter and I think I'm just going to desaturate it just a little bit more maybe the purples a little bit as well again you don't want to suck all the color out of it but just taking a little bit out just helps again allows the eye to go to the bird uh, where where you want it to. You don't want this big pop of color over here to draw the viewer's eyes away. Okay, so we'll go down. Um, I think that's really, there's, there isn't really much. Maybe it'll just, uh, the exposure looks, looks really nice on this one. Uh, so I think uh, if I just warm it up just a little bit more. Uh, another thing that I like to do, the yellow here on, on the bird, if you go down to the to the luminance slider on that, you can really affect how that looks. The colors are all there naturally. Uh, you just want to make sure they, just to highlight them a little bit. And even make the saturation, just make that color pop just a little bit more on it. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I don't think there's, don't want to overdo anything. I don't see any, any dust spots on, on the image anywhere that I got to take care of. As far as removing anything, I don't think there's anything that I find really distracting with the bird. If I did want to, if there was a, a big bright spot, oh, I guess I could go in. There is this little bit of a bright spot right here. So I could go into into Lightroom and do this, but I find uh, I can do it pretty well in Lightroom here. Just make your brush nice and big and just add just a little bit. And then you can go in, that's a little too much. Just, just decrease the saturation there a little bit. Uh, maybe just a little bit of that up, up in here too. Here we go, make it nice, nice right around the bird. So the viewer's eye goes right to the bird. So there it is. So we'll show you uh, before and after. So there you go, there's side by side. So there's the before and there's the after. You can see just a few quick edits in in Lightroom and with uh, using Topaz Denoise AI, you can make your make your images uh, really pop quite nicely. So a little bit of crop, a little bit of uh, Topaz Denoise AI, and uh, just making it look natural. That's what I try to do in Lightroom. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up and a like. And uh, if I get enough, maybe I'll do some more of these in the future. So thanks again for your time.